What's going on guys? Clench here with Classic Firearms. We've got Matt back today. What's up? <laughs> nice. And guys, you may have noticed that we've got some VZ-52 rifles here in front of us, which I think are pretty iconic. They're that transitional rifle, right? Yeah, they're really cool. Distinctively check. I really like them. Yeah. Well, all right, cool. You heard it. Matt really likes them. I really like them, but we've actually got something that's going to make you really like them even more. We've got some pretty exciting news about these rifles right here. So what's on the table in front of you guys is a selection of our current VZ-52 rifles, which was a fairly small lot, but they've been very popular with you guys. Well, we've got some great news on that front. Yeah, absolutely. And that great news is, is that we were able to actually purchase a, I guess you could say quite a bit more surplus, which is always good, but included in that surplus was the remaining or the remainders of these VZ-52s right here. And we were able to get them at a great price. And what that means to you is we are able to cost average what we have currently in house versus what we've got coming. And we're able to now pass that same savings onto you guys. So Matt, do you know that you can pick up one of these rifles right now, VZ-52 chambered in 762 by 45 for $499.99. That's fantastic, man. That's quite the savings. I would think so as well. So right now that is going to be $499.99. I think that's current industry breaking news, I would say. Honestly, $499.99 for these guys. However, we want to make it abundantly clear that we are very sensitive to the fact that a lot of you guys have already made the purchase of these same rifles, but at a higher price. He's a sensitive guy. I am a very sensitive guy, especially when it comes to our customers. And we want to let you guys know that have already purchased these rifles, that we're going to be taking care of you as well. So if you are one of those individuals that have made the purchase for one of these guys, go ahead, give us a call into customer service, and let's remedy that some with either some store credit or whatever the case may be to hopefully satisfy you guys. So take advantage of that. And with that being said, we've got, again, I'm going to consider these historic or at least iconic firearms here because you're going from the days of bolt action rifles, you know, those real distance shooters, if you will, open terrain, things like that, to now your semi-auto select fire type firearms. And I'd like to hear kind of your take on it because I think, again, they're, they're in that transformational or transitional period of history. Absolutely. They're very distinctive to the time frame. You know, uh, in World War II, most countries were fighting with a semi, uh, sorry, a bolt action rifle. And even before World War II, a lot of these countries were looking to move to a semi automatic rifle. Right. So shortly after World War II, you saw a lot of countries that finally adopted a semi auto and then quickly followed it up with a select fire. Yeah. So we can kind of consider that short lived period uh, transitional rifles. They were moving from one technology to another. And the SKS is a great example. In this case, we have the VZ-52, which is another great example. So these are semi-automatic gas-operated detachable magazine-fed rifles, but they would be quickly replaced by the VZ-58, which is a select fire, modern military kind of firearm. Right. Um, so you can see, uh, you know, each of these has rubber bands. So that's kind of keep a little tag from the importer, um, just some way of organizing these. But, uh, you know, these are fantastic little guns. Uh, very, you know, fairly lightweight. It uses that very interesting intermediate round 762 by 45. Right. So halfway between 308 and 762 by 39. <laughs> right. And uh, and they're a lot of fun to go shoot. In fact, uh, you know, it's one of those things where uh, you know, I really like these kind of guns, even though they have low capacity, because when you go out and plank, you can kind of shoot some and mm -hmm. then take a look at how you did. Yeah. You don't have that huge magazine to get through. Um, so as far as, you know, taking it out and just plinking with it or something, it'd be an absolute blast of tissue. Very cool. So, like I said, we have a handful of these guys lined up here. These all here, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, these are all what's coming from our standard VZs. Um, and then we have a couple that we would consider hand select here. Uh, but ultimately, from what I'm seeing, they all look pretty good to me. Um, definitely liking that blonde stock on that one. That one looks pretty cool. And then whatever this is looks really neat. <laughs> so that's very distinctive to the yeah. VZ-52 is yeah. that kind of yellowish green wood. I don't think I've ever seen another stock that looks like that. Right. And we don't have a ton of them that are in that coloration, but they are very strike whenever you come across one. Yeah, uh, it's definitely cool. I like it quite a bit. It uh, <laughs> offers a unique color, which I'm always a fan of, especially when you see those oddball type things out there. I hit on that that more blonde, reddish type of, I guess you'd say strawberry blonde maybe. Kind of uh, a, a light tan. Yeah. Um, and you see, of course, that there are several that are in darker browns. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, we just asked the guys, hey, grab us some rifles and 
you know, a couple of them. Pick rifles you would consider to be hand select if some if you were filling a hand select work. So we got these yeah. two on the end that are in, you know, a little bit better condition. I really like that that yellow stock. Yeah. I um, too. But all of them should be fully functional. There shouldn't be any mechanical issues, uh, regardless. This is only for cosmetic appearance. Right. And so with each rifle, you know, you're going to get one magazine. Uh, those magazines are, are kind of rare, but uh, each rifle does come with a mag, and it should be completely mechanically functional. Gotcha. As I sit here and play with it some. Yeah, so these things are pretty neat. Yeah, they use a very interesting gas system. Mm. You can actually pull these two tabs together and pop this dust cover off, oh, which yeah. lets you see that. So yeah. this is actually the gas piston, which is an annular gas piston. So it completely encircles the gas tube. It pushes on the sheet metal kind of, oh, you can think of that as a piston or op rod. Okay. And then there is a spring-loaded uh, two-finger kicker. Right. Um, so it would, when this comes back, if you want to hold that back, yeah. And when that comes back, if we push back, you can see those oh, yeah. two little fingers come back, and yeah. that's what pushes the piston. And I mean the. Uh, the yeah. I wonder, if, I wonder if you can show that. So right there is what Matt's referring to. Those two fingers there. And that little bit of motion is what gives it all the momentum it needs to go all the way back and cycle. Really? So that, that little bit pushes on the bolt, forces it all the way back, picks up the next round already. Yeah. It's sort of similar to the gas tappet system in the M1 carbine. Yeah, okay. Very cool. I'm putting that in there. Yeah. Right, there it is. Well, very neat. So, hey, I'm learning something new again. There you go. And then this is very easy. You just push that in, and when you just kind of... Well, sometimes they're a little stubborn. There we go. There it is. <laughs> very cool. Yeah, rifles that were made for war, right? Yep. <laughs> Very neat. Um, of course, you have all those like really kind of cool military characteristics of rifles from that day and age. So you have a fixed bayonet that folds. Yeah. So. Um, you know, at that time, I guess they they still really wanted to make sure that bayonet was a function that they had on the rifle. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that's similar true with the uh, SKSs. Yeah. You know, a lot of those got the uh, the bayonet on them. That's uh, either the uh, the blade or the um, spike type that, fi that folds under. Uh, but we were talking earlier, and you mentioned something about the butt plate having a hole in it for a cleaning kit. But I don't see a hole. So you just take this whole butt plate off. Yep. And boom, you got your area for your cleaning kit right oh, there on the side. Sweet, actually. How about that? You got some cloth in this one. I'll leave it in there for the for the customer. Yeah. <laughs> actually, what is it? What, is there something in there? I don't feel anything. Um, no, it's probably so, a tooth or something. Who knows? Well, uh, collected, who collected that? No, it's <laughs> uh, but yeah, so pretty neat stuff. And who knows what they've got hidden in these things. We've actually opened up a few, like some of the uh, uh, well, some SKSs we had all those. Uh, you remember Clara, the, the SKS yep. that we gave away uh, from those lines there. They had the uh, cleaning butt, the, like you were saying there, the, the hole for the, the cleaning kit. Mm -hmm. A couple of those you'd actually find cleaning kits, love letters, whatever else it might be. So pretty cool stuff that soldiers are a, uh, are an interesting bunch. You know, they might have yeah. had any number of reasons to store something back there. Oh yeah, you know, actually uh, one of the good uses for the ones in the back of our M16s is hot sauce, because you don't always have hot sauce everywhere you go. Always hot sauce is mandatory. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, guys, again, we just kind of wanted to pick these up, uh, show them off a little bit. Again, these are surplus guns, so if they come with a sling, they come with a sling. We're not going to guarantee or anything like that. Uh, kind of like, you know, trench art. If they come with some stuff drawn into the stock, that's just how it comes. Uh, we can't really narrow it down by that. Uh, but ultimately, I think we've got pretty cool rifles here. Matt, again, always appreciate you and your information on them. And uh, again, $499.99 is what we're running these guys at now because we were offered that discounted price to buy the lot of them. And now we're passing that same savings on to you. And even to those customers that bought them when we had them for that $699.99 price, give us a call back and let's get you some store credit and get you taken care of. Matt, anything else? Uh, I don't think so. It's just a great opportunity to pick up a really interesting gun. I think so as well. Guys, one last thing. One last thing. One last thing. Talk about surplus rifles. We are currently giving away the Hakim. The Hakim. Right behind you. Boom. Yep. And so an 8mm Egyptian made rifle that was originally designed by the Swedes. That's right. Yep. And they have actually sold the tooling and the design to the Egyptians in the 50s. And they were produced, I think, in the 50s and 60s, and only about 70,000 of them were ever made. So check out our video announcing this guy as our next giveaway, because it's a very unique operating system on this guy, or at least how the bolt works, and yeah. how you chamber check and everything else. Adjustable gas system, the yeah. very interesting uh, magazine. Check out that, guys. And as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.